Hello everybody. So I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to set up both VMware Workstation and the GNS3 Network Simulator so that way you could not only ping across or between VMs but you could ping across uh, separate networks that you've designed within GNS3. So what we'll do to get started is you'll need to have GNS3 open and then once you have a new project open we'll drop in two routers. And we will also need to drop in two hosts. And once you've done this, you'll want to start by right clicking on the first host and selecting configure. Once we're in here, we'll select host one and we are going to actually remove all of the network adapters except for the VMware network adapter VMNet1. And this network adapter should automatically install on your computer when you install VMware Workstation. And we'll do the same thing on the second host. Although this time we're going to leave VMware network adapter VMNet 8. And now you can connect up the devices. And before we proceed any further, I'm just going to quickly label my topology here so that way it's easier to follow and it's a good reference to look at when you're trying to figure out what you're configuring. the topology both designed and labeled, we'll start by uh, configuring the interfaces on the routers. So you'll want to start each router and open up a console. And once the router is up and running, we'll want to enter configuration mode. So we've configured this interface here on the router, and now we will need to configure the other one. Okay, so for the time being, this is all we're going to do on R1. But I just wanted to do a quick check just to show you that we have the interfaces configured and they are up. So we will want to do the same thing on uh, R2, but for this side of the topology. And we have configured the interfaces and set them up 
Okay, so now we'll have to configure the network adapters on both the VMs. So first we'll start by entering the Windows VM and we will configure the network adapter by right clicking on this icon in the bottom right corner which should be down here but might be in this little tray. Right click, open network and sharing center. We'll change the adapter settings and we'll want to right click on the adapter we want to configure properties and now we're going to open this IPv4 setting here and we want to use the following IP address which I'll show you once I have fully set this up here but you'll want to set the default gateway to the FA00 interface on the uh, R1 router in GNS3. So, uh, as you can see, I've set 192.168.10.3 as the IP address of this VM, and I've set the default gateway as the FA00 interface on R1, and it's within the same subnet as the 192.168.10.0 network or subnetwork. So from within the VM, once we've done this, you should be able to ping both of the interfaces on R1. So we'll open up the command prompt and we'll ping both those interfaces. Alright, so if you've done everything that I've done so far and you're having issues pinging those routers, what you may want to check is ensure that the Windows Firewall has been turned off, which you can do by searching Windows Firewall and selecting Turn Off the Windows Firewall and then selecting this, and pretty simple. Once that's done, it should be off. And what, what, what may happen here is you might be able to ping the router, but later on when we try to ping back from R2 across to the other VM from the Linux machine, we might not be able to do so, even though the routers and VMs are configured correctly. So uh, now that we've basically finished the configuration on the Windows VM, we'll want to open up the Linux VM. And once you're inside, select the, or hover over the top left corner and you'll want to open a terminal. Once we have a terminal open, we'll want to either switch over to the root user or you'll have to issue sudo before every command. So we are going to sudo, switch user, root. Okay, and now we'll just quickly take a look at the current network adapter settings. As you can see, I've already configured the adapter here to match with the uh, Linux VM on this side of the topology, but we'll go over the commands again anyways. So first we'll start with setting up the IP address on the adapter we're using. And depending on what Linux version you're using, the, the adapter might have a different name. It might say like ETH1 or ETH0, um, but you'll want to do ifconfig, the adapter name, and then we are going to enter in the IP address. And we will need to do the same thing, uh, except for starting after the name of the adapter, we will want to put netmask. and then the subnet mask. And then lastly, we'll have to add the router. So route, or sorry, the default gateway. The route add default gateway. And then we will have the gateway IP address. And we'll also have to put in the name of the adapter again. Okay. So we should be able to, from this point, ping the interfaces on R2. 
So to do that, we'll do ping count four because in Linux it will just continuously run until you stop it. So we will only run it four times. All right, so we've configured the network adapters on both the virtual machines and the interfaces on the routers. However, we'll need to do one last thing before we can ping across the networks. We will need to add a routing protocol to the routers. So what we will do is we will open up R1 and I'm going to use OSPF to achieve this. So in order to add OSPF to the router, what we'll need to do is do router OSPF and then because the third octet in my network uh, on this side is 10 I'm going to call router OSPF 10 and then I'm going to do network the network IP address so this one here And then you need to use a wildcard for the subnet mask. And what a wildcard is, it is the inverse of the subnet mask. So because this is 255.255.255.0, we will need to do 0, 0, 0, 255. And we will call this area 0. And we will need to do the same thing for this network, which is and because the subnet mask for this is 255.255.255.252, uh, the inverse of this will be 3. And we will also add this to area 0. So OSPF should be configured on this router, but we will also need to do the same thing for R2. And because the third octet in the Net, or the VM network on this side is 20, I'm going to call this one router OSPF 20. Okay, now we've configured OSPF on both of the routers, so we should be able to ping the other VM from its opposite VM as well as the interfaces on the other routers. Um, as you can see, OSPF, uh, the, the path was added into the OSPF database. So what we'll do is we'll open up the Windows machine again, and this time, we will ping, I'm just going to try to make the font a little larger, but okay. We will ping the first interface on R2, and provided we've done everything correctly, it should work. And now we will also ping the interface on the other VM. Alright, so we have everything working from the Windows VM over to the Linux VM. So now we'll want to ping back to this interface on R1 as well as the interface on the other VM. So far, we should also be able to ping that VM. Now, if you're able to ping the R1 interface, but you can't ping the VM, you might want to double check the firewall settings on the Windows VM just to make sure that uh, they are off. But other than that, you have connectivity all the way across between both VMs and across these networks. 
So I hope this video was helpful for you, and thank you for watching. Thank you.